All right, welcome back, my dear student. So, on the last lecture, we learned how to connect, how to load up, load in a model, right, with this manual way of doing it. And I told you I was going to show you how to do it uh, using a auto load function, and I will on this lecture here. But anyway, then we are loading in this model here, and then using a method inside, right here. But we actually are not really using it we are calling it but it doesn't have anything it doesn't have anything to assign to this result here all right so the next step would be to actually make a query here right but first let me show you the second way of actually loading a model all right and the reason why I'm showing you this is because on this step right here we have to load load in our database too all right so I'm gonna kill two birds in one shot and show you both ways so we're doing it manually here. Now to do it automatically, let's go to the autoload.php and go all the way to the bottom here. And here you would type in the name of that model that you want to autoload, which in our case is user underscore model and save it. All right, this will load in all the models that you want. And then you go back to your users here and we can just comment this out. And you can just leave it there for reference if you like. All right, beautiful. So now we can load this model and we don't have to type it type it in anymore. But now the problem is that we're not actually doing anything with it, right? We're just using it here, but we don't, we don't get anything out of it. Let's go back to that user model and now let's communicate with our database. So how do we communicate with our database, right? Well, we got two ways again, we can auto load it or you can manually do it. Let me show you the manual way first. First of all, you need to create this. This is how you can find it in the documentation of Code Igniter. All right, you have this array, and this array we have something like this host name. And then what you do here is you apply your database configuration. In our case, it's going to be the host name is localhost local host there we go and you do this for all your database configuration and of course we have a host name we have a user's name and so on and so on let me just go ahead and and copy this because I have it somewhere there we go all right so for the host name local host username root you get my point right and once you're done with this then you can go ahead and say this load database and then you can pass this in like this all the configuration there and the best thing about it is that you can assign it to a variable and you can say you know what that's it this is my connection here beautiful all right now you can also create another connection so let's say for example you have a second connection to a database somewhere all right, this is a second connection right here, as you can see. You can come and have a second connection. There we go. All right, so now you have a second connection to the database. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so you can use it like this, but I don't like using it like this, to be honest with you. All right, so I'm going to comment this out. What I like to do is I like to go to autoload.php. Actually, let's do something first. Let's actually put a configuration for a database here because we only have, we're only going to have one database, right? So actually not in config. Go to config folder and go to database. And this is where you're going to put the configuration. Our configuration is root because, well, that's my configuration because I haven't changed it. And for the username is root, password is empty, and the database is errand underscore db save. All right. So now that this is done, then we can go and actually make sure that this is auto loaded. So let's go to auto load that PHP and go all the way to the top and scroll down a little bit to where it says libraries. In my case, is line sixty one. I'm gonna actually load the database class called igniter has many different libraries all right one of the libraries is the database class this database class is going to have a whole bunch of methods that you can use to
to do your regular CRUD, the create, read, update, and delete queries. All right. So we're going to have a very, very simple syntax that we can use to communicate with a database by using their class of the database. All right. So that's beautiful. So now we come here to our user model and we don't have to do all this. All we got to do here, since we are loading that database automatically, auto loading it, we can just say this DB. All right. And then we can use their built-in methods like get, for example. And now we call the users what? Users table like this. And that's going to give me all the users information. Can you believe that? All right. We get all the users information and we can assign it to something. Let's say, let's just return it. Let's just say return return this actually we got to say return and let's just say let's assign this to a query like this and we're gonna say return query and we're gonna use this function called result right here all right and that's going to re return all everything from that table all right as an array of objects all right. So now in the other side, let's go to the controllers here. We can actually grab this. This variable right here is going to have an array of objects coming in from the database table users. So we're going to have uh, properties like ID, username and password that we can loop through it and then we can do whatever we want with it we can process that information we can even echo it on the screen on the next lecture because this is getting kind of long i'm going to actually do that all right so if you want to go ahead and do that right now that's up to you so i challenge you to create to use this here loop through it and echo out the results and see what you get all right, try it out. It's fun. And I'll see you in the next lecture and show you the way I do it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.